furious and you guys are already fantastic. I can see the spoils of your pleasure all at my feet right now. We are going to get underway with our next quarterfinal. So, without further ado, I would say, are you guys ready for the next quarterfinal? Come on, guys. Are you ready for the next quarterfinal? What about when I tell you that our next, one of our next contenders will do it right now? Are you ready? From Helsinki, it's Steroidy 69. Steroidy, how are you feeling, sir, stepping up onto this stage? Well, I'm pretty excited and nervous as well. Now, nerves are understandable, and we saw it worked off very well for uh, our, our, our previous matchup. Playing with the 200 kids here, everybody having a good time, enjoying the game. What does it mean to be in the top eight? Well, I don't know. Well, it's super cool, and I probably, like, I expected that I would be top eight. Expected top eight. I love that already. Nothing wrong with that. Stay right here. We do, of course, need an opponent. So... Join me in welcoming, all the way from Boston, it's Clash with Ash! <laughs> Ash, sir, here you stand. 200 entered, you're in the top eight. How does that feel? It feels great. I think I need about two or three more beers, Sean. Two or three more beers. Does anybody else need a beer? You're in absolute perfect company. What do you have planned? What can you tell us about your deck without going into too much detail? Well, as long as I'm not going against a cheesy mortar player, I think I'll be good, Sean. <laughs> Definitely a popular comment there. Did you watch the previous matchup? I did. That was intense, and I'm all Team Red all the way, so I'm pretty excited. Hopefully, we'll continue the winning streak. Any more Team Red out there? What, what about Team Blue? This crowd is torn, which can mean only one thing. Gentlemen, please, it is about the fun. Shake hands. Round of applause for our next quarterfinalist. Well, stage is ready. Some new decoration. Players are ready. It's time to hand off to the men who always can, and they're led by Kolaris. Thank you very much once again. Doesn't want any of that cheesy mortar player. That's uh, not exactly the best one. Mortar there, player, did you say? No, no. <sighs> All right. Play okay. to win, my friend. There's money on the line. You're an expo guy, aren't you? All the way. Yeah, I figured. All right. Well, we've got Steroidy going up against Clash with Ash. Clash with Ash. A lot of you guys out there know this guy. A very consistent player. I mean, let's yeah. not forget there was a recent YouTuber tournament. I believe in like January sort of time. This yes. guy came second. Yeah. Second place. You know, that, that's. A consistent player right here and going straight into top eight as well. Good yeah. accomplishment already. For sure. I think one thing about this uh, setup and the, the format overall though is how fantastic it is to see how close everybody was in this 200 man setup. Like, there was so much. Everyone started at 2,000 trophies through yep. the open uh, where everybody was competing, starting at that 2,000 trophies. And I think the top was like 2,735 in, inside, inside, or 2, uh, 2,375 even, I should say. And then below that, like ninth and 10th, were one and two trophies away from qualifying. That's how close it was. Uh, so these two obviously making it into the top eight. We've got Steroidy, who on live only has like 2,905 trophies in comparison to someone like Clash with Ash, who's got about 400 more or so than him on live. Now I think if one thing is apparent here is that um, I think because of this even setting, the, the in-game uh, current trophies don't really seem to actually uh, sort of mean a whole lot in this setting where everyone here... Um, yeah, I mean quite so much where some of these guys, that, like I said, uh, we had Arix who was the number one seed who yep. just kind of turned up, yep. you know, and just beat everyone to get into the top seed. But on that <laughs> exact note, we then had the bottom seed in Azim who came in and won 3-0. So I mean, I think unpredictability is what we're going to see throughout this entire top eight. Absolutely. I think a lot of people, will, again, though, will be rooting for Clash with Ash. It says uh, favorite card here, Hog Rider. But I mean, to be fair, Hog Rider is pretty good. I'm, I'm not too bothered about that. Hog Rider is pretty good. It's a good card. Hog Rider and a freeze combo. I mean, we already saw that put to amazing use yep. in game one. But in this thing, I mean, that's the thing about all these guys, and that everyone is so familiar with the games. You know, these guys are so familiar with the <clears> game. They're getting their decks up right now. These guys are trying to get good to go. Yep. But what I'm excited for is when they have favorite cards here. There's always, I mean, th th these eight players in themselves all have a different favorite card. So does that mean that? 
that we're going to potentially see some different decks, some different play Maybe. styles? Or, you know, is there this one kind of tried and tested method that everyone's going to try and rinse in the top eight? I mean, you know, there, there was some kind of uh, educated banter from uh, Clash with Ash on the other side because Mortar, of course, being the favorite card of Steroides. So we might see that as we get into our next quarterfinal here already. Skeletons coming out with that Hog Rider and Steroides going to react in turn with the Inferno Tower as well as the Skeletons too, bringing that down fast. And I like the immediate reactions ready with the Inferno Tower. You mean, from the get-go, these guys are good to go. You know, they're not going to get caught off guard. They know what they want to do. They know what they want to do. And they're going to stick to that plan. Clash with Ash, psychological warfare already. As we will send that minion horde towards the middle. Nothing to clean that up just yet. So that got the Inferno Tower pretty quickly. Ice Wizard going to be utilized on this left-hand side. And the Alexa Collector already been thrown down by Steroides. So once again, looking forward to the late game. And there's the Princess, the legendary card that we're seeing coming out from Clash with Ash. This is definitely, the first, I believe, the first Princess we've seen in this top eight so far. Yes. So I mean, all, all made already this interesting dynamic where you've got Goblins are running in the front, trying to pressure that tower, and then you've just got the back barrage there, taking out the damage with the Princess yeah. in the back. Now, an interesting thing to note about the Princess is that it does outrange most things. Apparently not the Tesla, though. <laughs> Tesla will bring it down. There's the Here Mortar. Here comes the Mortar. Nobody wants the Mortar. Listen to the crowd. <laughs> going absolutely wild. Minions going in. Nice Hedrick there just shut it down. And that's going to be a little bit of a trade on there. The cloud's still oh. going. Oh, he pushes it down though. Clash with Ash. Feeling it. Feeling it here for the crowd. That wizard getting a little bit of damage done, but not too much. And here comes the princess once again. It will outrange those towers, but once again, the Tesla is a, is a really, really good answer for it. Great reactions by Steroidy. Well, one thing I really like about the thing I can't <laughs> constant ammo. Hard to deal with. But, I mean, in this situation, I love the fact that you've got this Tesla tower that's going in to top the princess. Uh -oh. Obviously, it only attacks when there is an enemy in its vicinity. Get it, get it. There's the whole minion horde to try and protect the monster. He protects it, and there's the lightning to try and bring it down. Here we go. Oh, Here comes that actually. tower put them. Is the more going to get at least one more shot? The question is, how long does it take? And that's going to be at least one more hit right there. Yeah. Good tower damage on the side of Steroidy. Yeah, I didn't realize that that was the zap over it. It's always a little bit difficult for me to tell here from this distance, but there you go. Uh, one elixir mid skeletons again with more elixir uh, collectors. Let's say two in. times elixir and uh, the elixir pumps. That means a lot of mortars, yes. especially when they're in play, good to go. And look, he sets up the Tesla ready for the princess, and probably we will see mortar later on coming down. He's got a lot of defensive structures here, which are allowing him to keep his uh, buildings alive. So basically, he's trying to just defend it out, waiting for the mortar to come along to be the big damage dealer. Oh, here comes the hog rider push. with the accompaniment from the princess. This could be a lot of damage if he doesn't do anything to stop it. Oh my god, here we this go. is a huge push. He tries to throw down the elixir collector to tank up some of this damage here, but he's really pushing very, very hard onto this location. It's looking good. I mean, that Frostmage is going to take double some of the princess. damage. Double Princess strike! That tower's going to hurt! Big party on the left-hand side with double minion waves going in. Yeah, I couldn't see if the Princess has survived that, but it looks like the Minion Horde brought them down. But the Minion Horde, as well as Hog Rider and Skeletons, coming out here to try and push this down. He's done quite a bit of damage, considering the defensive nature of Steroides build. This is definitely going to go into Sudden Death, and again, at this point, it's going to be one tower to do it. So, I mean, it's an interesting way, playing for the clock. I mean, evidently, Steroides has been playing with, obviously, the Mortar in deck, yeah. where he's been very defensive. And the second it reaches extra time, play for the one tower. And we're into that overtime again, so it is just one tower in it. As the, this Tesla will be outranged for the moment by the Princess. And likewise, will this minion hold even go towards the Princess? Yes, they do, so they will clean her up. And there's that healthy, healthy can, but once again, Princess coming in in the background. Here comes that. I mean, we are in a point now where it's double Elixir, so the Princess will be Rider. a lot more viable. Hog Rider jumping over the river there on towards some of these defensive structures, and the Princess doing a lot of work from the back here. The Ice Wizard at the front tanking well for it. If he has something to place in front of this Princess and keep the value going, that could be very, very strong for Bash with Ash, but he's going to decide to rely on a slower push from the back with the Ice Wizard. Interesting play. I mean, it's you've got the goblins running in. That's going to soak up some of that damage. And once again, the Inferno Tower. Here comes the mortar. He's going to oh. have to do something to stop that. Big, big attempt at defending this with the minions going down as well. There, that minion horde. But the Ice Wizard getting right on top of that, bringing it down. Here comes a big push. Hog Rider coming in the back. Are we going to see another Hog Rider come back in this situation? I might be able to. It's not too bad damage here, but it's going to be brought down very, very quickly. Double Tesla in the middle is providing great damage, as well as those minion horde pushing this back as well. Absolute so defense. Close. And a mortar in the back. This is looking pretty bad. He's going to have to do something once again to stop this. The cannons one hit away ah, from goblins death. Are on. Goblins are on with the skeletons, so not too bad. Hog Rider might be able to get in there and clean that up as well. The Teslas, they're trying to do a bit enough, but it, it's just not. They're not in range to get onto the Hog Rider quick enough before it gets onto the mortar. Now, there's so much defense. There's so many defensive items right now. You can just see that it's, it's a complete stalemate at all times, but the mortar has just been constantly chipping away at the tower once again. You have the mortar garnering booze here uh -oh. in the crowd. Oh, but no. he has nothing to deal with it. Steroid, he's cheering. He knows he might have this with the amount of room that this mortar actually has. There is, the cannon. there is the cannon. Which oh, is he's going to bring it down. 
Phew! That was almost a bad situation right there. There was nothing to contend with it, but that cannon placed in a very good situation just to soak up the damage to allow that princess to clean up. Yeah. Here comes the minion horde running straight in. In with the skeletons, in with the frost mage again, just trying to defend it. Once again, 55 seconds left on the clock. This could still go towards the Roidy if he just gets this push. Yeah, does he have much to complement that Hog Rider? Doesn't look like it's going to be able to bring that down just yet. There's a few defensive... Ah, oh, there's only one skeleton, so this is an opportunity to actually push on through and do some blasting damage here. As that Ice Wizard does not get down those minion hordes. And it's all about that constant defensive play. I mean, the cannon, you know, the, yeah. the, the, the mortar's gonna, and there's a double cannon right there, so it's not gonna go straight for the tower in this exact one. Again, 30 seconds left on the clock. Something has to get going. I mean, this has been a stalemate the entire match, but I mean, it kind of seems like Steroidy has just been able to quell any kind of attack at all times. 20 seconds left on this overtime, and if it is a draw, that means, well, then they go on and continue on till the whoever wins three first is the victor. Uh, and I believe that they will have to change their decks as well during all of that. But seven seconds remaining with two cannons and all these defensive structures. He's trying to go for it, but Clash with Ash will stall out against the Mortar. <laughs> Say good job. That is GG, a draw here for our first game. Now, the interesting thing in this situation is uh, what we saw actually quite a lot of fortifications be used in our previous set. Yes. And what was the one answer for that? Free spell. Mm -hmm. So are we now going to see almost both these guys change or is Clash with Ash going to kind of acknowledge that these kind of uh, these kind of defensive units I mean the free spell that can just stop them dead in their tracks which allows your hyper aggressive units to run there and then start dealing out the tower damage I mean in this kind of situation what do you think you'd do to swap the decks around? It's a question. It's a, there's a lot of choices. A lot of choices. As I say, I think the freeze option is always something that's very, very powerful. I'd change. I mean, I, I think I'd change towards the free spell. Just to, every single time it looked like he had something going, it was just straight in for like the Tesla Tower or I mean the Mortar, even though it, it does still soak up damage as well. So, I mean, it was a constant stalemate that it just felt like there needed to just be that one extra element in either fight just to turn the tide. You know, minions alone, uh, the troop units didn't really cut it. I mean, a lot of people and a lot of people out there probably know that Mortar can be a bit of a pain to deal with. Uh, for sure, uh, but of course that is something that you know people have come to terms with you know uh, at some of the higher levels. Uh, so there's definitely a few ways to actually be able to deal with it for sure. Make sure to tweet at us at Clash Royale uh, to tell us how you're enjoying these games so far. I really enjoyed our first series so far. Into our second one here of our quarterfinals, and Clash with Ash looking poised here to defend against the mortars all series long maybe <laughs> i mean to be fair the mortar only really seemed like a humongous threat right at the very beginning where i mean he actually saw it in his face where he realized he didn't actually have the elixir to stop the push oh. so a lot of unnecessary damage just kind of went out there um but from that point on i think he was a lot more aware but looks like we are going to go straight back in the question is what have the switches been have there been any at all clash with ash we already see an elixir collector being added on here uh, in his deck change and elixir collector on the other side so i know from not a gentlemanly agreement which will uh, kind of level out unless we see any kind of uh, spells like a rocket or something like that to bring it down a little bit earlier than his opponent for Ooh, example. that's a very early mortar though. The shake of the head from Clash with Ash, he does not want any of that mortar. And how is he going to respond in turn? We have the Princess already firing from the back. Poison going down as well there to bring that down. It's a good answer to it in this situation. I like the change. I mean, just being able to dish out that big AoE damage. Just to, you know, handle more targets at once. It will handle those troops that come out. But at the same time, uh, what we saw a lot there was Zeroidy put down uh, for, like, sort of those buildings close together. Yep. And that's where the Poison will kind of handle both of them. Now, important to note that the Princess there, when she outranges towers, unless she gets nudged back, she won't necessarily retarget any anything uh, near her. So that's why... I mean, Minion Horde is actually a very good answer to just a princess alone. You can't really nudge back a target that's on the ground when you're flying around. Uh, so that's all good. And once again, the Mortar and Tesla combo. <laughs> but again, we just see that constant poking damage. And, and yeah. I, I like the idea of actually putting the testing it just like this. That's actually quite a lot of poke that's coming out straight into the left tower. And just like that, half health on Clash with Ash's left hand tower. It's great defensive capability uh, from Steroidy in the end, and I, I love it. Every single time the mortar goes down, Clash with Ash just smiles. Clash with Ash trying to that. he's trying to avoid <laughs> he's trying to avoid sort of showing signs right there where Ooh. this mortar is constantly pumping up damage. Pecker on the right hand side, interesting play. Yeah, this is uh, a bit of a deviation up from the first game. And now he's angry. This this is an angry Pecker right here. He's gonna try and push down this right hand side. Mortar again, and he gets one shot oh. before he targets the cannon. The question is, is he gonna target the cannon in this situation? I'm sure he will, because it's close together. Uh, oh, not necessarily, he's going straight on. past it. It's already locked on. I uh, threw down that cannon a little bit later. Very good, unfortunate. Good clean up there with the arrows on towards that minion hole behind the P.E.K.K.A. You need to get damage behind the P.E.K.K.A. to make it really, really viable here. Uh, and it will be cleaned up. And actually those arrows didn't even hit the um, full extent of that minion hole there for a moment. So uh, Clash with Ash is putting on some great, great pressure here at the moment. 
I mean, Clash of Lights, that, that was quite an interesting little push there, and he's getting a nice amount of damage. The Princess again, getting slowed down, taken out. The problem is, though, is we see another Mortar combo Just out. like that one. Oh, no, this could be bad. Peck has already been committed to on the right-hand side. Uh-oh. 30 seconds left. I mean, at this situation, should he can afford to be just... Bring it down. To be defensive. He needs to bring that down right now. If it does not die... Is he going to get one more oh! shot? That's going to be that! Here comes one tower <laughs> on the side of Steroidy. Now he just has to wait the clock out. 15 seconds. He can... Is he going to be able to stop the Pekka? That's the question. Uh, it doesn't matter how you win. It's winning that matters here at the moment. The Mortar bringing it home so far. Six seconds on the clock. That tower's not going to go down. Oh, no. Two... I mean, two Pekkas. If that was just oh, maybe a few oh. seconds earlier, maybe that would have been a great push. I mean, two Pekkas in one lane is going to be a nightmare to deal with. But at that point, it just didn't even matter. He didn't quite get them fast enough. Uh, and in that situation, I mean, that Mortar just with the constant poking and poking and poking. Yeah. It didn't, it didn't work out for Ash in that game. Very unfortunate. But, <laughs> I mean, Steroidy's going to take a game. I mean, he has the Mortar. Everyone else has access to the same cards in this situation. And, and it just worked. Now we can see Clash with Ash if he wants to actually switch up his decks and uh, <laughs> see if he can find a response. So far, not been easy. Again, was able to stall it out in that first game admirably. I mean, like, it, it can be a pain to work against that kind of mortar play. Uh, and the thing is, is that since the like previous metas of this game, almost every defensive structure has really kind of taken a hit and taken uh, a bit of a nerf here or there or whatever. Mortar, still doing well, man. Still doing well. It's one of those situations where, I mean, um, clearly you go into this kind of tournament with a base plan. Uh, and in, I mean, both decks, Steroidy has gone straight out for the mortar. So this guy's going to be familiar with it. These guys are going to waste no time this time around going straight into the next game. And in this situation now, uh, it is going to be one up. For Steroidy, I mean, it was the constant pressure. Are we going to see that pressure again? I mean, the, the reality is, Ash needs an answer for that mortar. Yeah, definitely. And uh, what we're seeing coming out once again, Princess behind all of this. We'll clean up that minion hole pretty quickly. Another early mortar, very good situation. And there's no units help, but there's going to be free poke right here. Yeah, and those are in range of that tower, but it should die to these goblins, which is okay. And it's actually not necessarily an early lead, because although we got those mortar strikes, Steroidy is actually the one with the weak tower compared to Ash. Mm, yeah, so overall, I mean, the Hog Rider at the beginning did do quite a bit. Um, <clears throat> we'll see now if Steroid is just going to be saving up. Don't know what he has in hand at the moment. But Looks like both players being quite conservative with their Elixir. And <laughs> speaking of that, straight in with the Elixir pump. And I mean, it's they're both going to be planning some kind of play. I mean, that's what happens in this situation, right? Where nice Tesla there just trying to take out those units. It feels like the minions at the, that far forwards are almost just kind of trying to bait out responses from his opponent at the moment. Maybe get some cards out of the opponent's deck. Yeah, uh, seeing the Ice Wizard be employed. And Ice Wizard versus Ice Wizard. I'm going to assume this isn't going to go well for Steroides, Ice Wizard. He Hope went into it with less health. And so he's <laughs> definitely going to go down. Here Sorry, we go. Sorry, buddy. All right, so Princess has followed that up against some skeletons. And actually, Arrow's already coming in, taking out the uh, Princess. And actually, that could be one of the better choices here for Steroidy to actually deal with it. It's trade for trade in terms of Elixir, but he has Elixir collectors behind it. This is a big push, though. Hogrider's going to take out that Tesla without much trouble. Going in for some of those units. Whoa. Nice. Here comes big damage on the Hog Rider. Yeah, that was a great stun coming out there. They, uh, arrows are going to be able to take out quite a lot of that. And once again, Ice Wizard versus Ice Wizard. But look how much damage Clash with Ash and has done. And he still gets away a cheeky little Ice Spell right there. Just to get that yeah. extra little piece of damage. Uh, he can have, If he keeps this pressure on the go, especially once we're five seconds away from doubling the Elixir speed right now. So, I mean, if he keeps this pressure, he could very well get it through. We haven't seen much of a chance at all to go for more in this situation. Yeah, this is... Uh, Tesla's being set up, so Mortar might be close behind it in a moment here by Steroidy. But the problem is, is that the minions are already on his doorstep, so he doesn't really want to commit to that just yet. He's going to clean up and then try go for it later. If he keeps the Tesla alive, which is the perfect play there for a moment, Mortar's going to get added on, and there could be some damage here. The Mortar is going to focus that cannon initially, but if they can clear it out as quickly as possible, yep. he is going to get that free poke onto the tower, especially with the Tesla tower in front that is going to soak up the initial damage. And the Princess, will she get enough damage done there later on? Looks like the Ice Wizard will be able to clean that off in the end, though. It will fall. And Minion Horde going to come in as well here at Foster already. I'm thinking in this situation, Ash just needs one push. That's all it takes. But here comes the Mortar. And Again. the Minion is big damage on Ash's tower. This could go pear-shaped in any second. Oh, the arrows! The arrows were brilliant to clean up there from Steroidy. He knows he's got a great opportunity here. Oh, it's no. still pressuring. Two more shots, I think. Two more hits, and it's going to be oh, GG's. It's too much. It's too much. Look at all. Oh, here the comes the rocket. rocket as well. He saved, saved the rocket. Him. Just for the end right there. <laughs> Just like that, Steroid, he's going to take it. Once again, I had no idea he even had a rocket no, until that point. He saved it until the very end. Just to chip in right there. The thing is, is that I don't even think he needed it necessarily right there. <laughs> cheeky, <laughs> I love cheeky it. man. He embraces the booze. He embraces it. 
every game need, every game needs a heal, right? Exactly, man. I mean, his favorite card is Mortar. Everyone knows what he's gonna do. Every game needs a bad guy, but steroidy. <laughs> Two zero. Hey, it's working. He is winning, and he is <laughs> one game away from advancing onto the semi-final. I think I'm still a little bit blown away by that surprise rock. He did not need to use that rocket at the end. Do you not know what I mean? I mean, but... I guess, I guess maybe take no chances. But in that situation, it's just you know what? <laughs> I'm gonna win this game, and I'm gonna show everyone right now that doesn't even matter. I'm gonna rocket you just to win. For that free. image there, right, of steroidy through the confetti dancing away. That's every mortar player. Dream right there. Somebody, was... Someone needs to gift that to save it. <laughs> Put that it on the Reddit beautiful. or something. Yeah. That was feeling when winning uh, quarterfinals and tournaments through Mortar at the moment. That was that was beautiful. But now he's one game away from events gone. He doesn't need to swap his deck. Uh, it's really unfortunate because I mean, Clash, uh, Ash was so close yes. in that game. Yes. And he had, he had the, other, the advantage was his. It was just that one time when he had nothing to handle the Mortar and it was just the constant pressure. So, I mean, it was looking good for him, but it was just his inability to kind of maintain the constant pressure uh, is what really hurt him in the end. But once again, he's gone in for the Archers, Ooh. gone in for a switch. Here comes the Barbarian Hunt. I mean, now, to be fair, not only is the Barbarian Hunt going to confuse uh, and distract, uh. but the constant <laughs> Barbarians that are pumped out of that hut are also going to act as a distraction as well. Yeah, it's a bit of a commitment early on, obviously, it being seven elixir, but like the longer it goes on, the longer it pays for itself. And the realistic thing is, is with Steroidy already committing to a Tesla in the middle, as Clash with Ash, you can get away with this Barbarian Hut's cost early on, because you know your opponent has already spent something on static defense. Absolutely. Once again, we can see a poison going in there, but the Barbarian is just going to be constantly pumped down. Now, we see the same thing from Steroidy, but just on kind of the right hand side this time. Yeah. Yeah, trying to do a little bit over there. The mortar really is not getting too much done. The thing is, is that the Barbarian Hut, likewise, is, was for a while actually uh, providing a focus fire for the mortar. And that's so, exactly why I just yeah. gone for the pick. Exactly. Very smart stuff. It's cool. It, it has a lot of utility here. And it will allow constant pressure still down that left hand side. Almost a full spawner uh, build that we're seeing here from him with reinforcement from you know smaller minions, obviously. With it's a very, very light cost deck that we're seeing here from Clash with Ash. And, and I love the secret weapon. I love the idea of going for this because this is gonna be counter for the mortar. We have only ever seen the mortar go for a tower one time. The only every other time it's been targeting uh, a troop. The only problem with Clash with Ash is you've got to be careful about how all of these troops are clumping up down that left hand side. Because if the mortar starts firing at them when they're all clumped up, it's gonna get really good value, but at least it's not shooting at your towers, most importantly. The problem in this situation was the fact that it was constantly just chipping away, you know? And in this situation, yeah, yeah. because there's so many troop units coming through, he hasn't really had the chance to do that with the mortar. So if he can get some of those really good patented, I mean, I guess it depends on what he's replaced uh, his his uh, spawners with, you know? And again, you know, really strategical placement of these buildings. If a mortar does go down and there's no minions to attack, that hut should be first in range of the mortar. So it's once again denying any damage going down from those tow on those towers. That's a nice tidy push. That was right. a uh, nice there push on the left-hand side right there. I mean, once again, the mortar's not really doing anything to handle out his towers, but Ash is now doing a good job of constantly using his troop units to chip yeah. away at that left-hand tower. I like it. Here comes the rocket. He wants to bring down that barbarian hut. Doesn't get it fully. Ooh, oh, giant in the middle. Here we go. Oh my god, Royal Giant on the way. This was hidden for a while here as Clash with Ash is really pushing down this tower. The secret card that he kept hold of here for all this time has done big, big damage down that left hand side. That was a really nice play, and even then the poison just adding that tiny little piece of damage. But this is a really good play. I mean, now the Mortar's going to start to target his right hand tower, so he has got to be careful. The second we go into sudden death, I mean, all one tower's going to yeah, all it's going to take in this situation. Yeah. And the thing is, again, if he sets up a push on the left-hand side and then is able to throw down a Royal Giant in a similar vein, of course, it did catch their idea a little bit off guard, so now he has that information. Now he knows what's going on. Um, well, that Mortar did quite a bit of damage on the right. You know, I was just about to say I wondered what his final card was, and right. then straight in with the Royal Giant. <laughs> Here right. comes another Mortal, oh. this is bad! He's actually committing fully to the left-hand side, but this I don't know if this is going to work out. That Mortar's going to do big damage on that right. He needs to kill that tower right now. This he needs could to go kill either this way. One. I don't know. I think he should have been a bit careful. He's, of course, Steroidy. he's going to put a border on the right hand side. Steroidy. Is he going to get this? It's going to oh, go down. Never the rocket. Never rocket. Just oh. to take it. 3 0. Steroidy will take it. Oh, the attempt at the commitment on the left hand side by Clash with that. Can you say victory oh. stolen through his fingertips? I mean, oh my days. That was. What? It was looking so good! It was looking so good! That and then he missed the mortar for one push! He ignored the mortar for one push and it cost him 
everything. I wonder what would have happened there. Just like any small minion he had on that right-hand side, maybe doing a little bit of work on it. Of course, technically, <sighs> it would have been in range of the uh, of the archers from the tower, but still. Uh, I just... feel like he didn't stick to the plan <sighs> right. right at the very end when it mattered, because it was doing such a good job. The mortal was just constantly distracted over and over and over again. And right at the end, when he decided to go for that, basically it was like a base race, just with the mortar on his side, he decided to commit to that royal giant push, and he just left nothing to handle that mortar on the right, and that's it. And he had the rocket as well. It worked out so well the first time, not necessarily the second time around. I think we can go to the stage now to hear from our winner, Steroidy, moving on to the semi-final. We can indeed, Kalar. Steroidy, first of all, congratulations. How do you feel right now? Just, I'm, I'm wordless. I'm just, it's, it's, it is amazing, and I know that you all like mortar. Mor it's amazing. What did you think when you were playing and the crowd was giving you a little bit of feedback for your choice in, uh, in cards? I didn't care much, actually. Wow. Well, yeah, I didn't care much. I was just playing my own game, and that's it. Well, let the haters hate, because you are our second semi-finalist of the day. Guys, first off, a round of applause for your second semi-finalist, Steroidy69. I'll jump over and say hi. Ash, how was that for you? Uh, it, it, it hurts. It hurts, Sean. But honestly, it was my job to counter him, and I didn't get the job done. So hats off to him. Hats off to him. Guys, a round of applause. Played like a champion. Ash. <laughs> Guys, we've had one red, one blue. What do you think for the...